Oh, g'day guys, it's Sam here from Built Not Bought and on this episode, I'm going to be attempting to convert my patrol from manual to auto in 24 hours. Oh. Well, it's currently 6 a.m. Well, it's actually 5.54 on the 6th of August. So at around about 6 is where I'm starting this. So at 6 o'clock tomorrow, Tuesday, the 7th of August, this thing is going to be an auto driving out of here, not a manual. So that is sort of the whole challenge, the whole plan. It's probably gonna be a bit quicker than that, but remember I'm filming this as well. That's gonna take a bit longer than usual. So why am I doing this to begin with? Look, listen closely fellas, it's for the missus, believe it or not. We're actually gonna be jetting over, well not jetting, driving over to the Eastern States and she can't drive a manual. Not only that, so she can have a drive, it's also because I think it's gonna help the economy being a six speed, so I've gone the 6L80E. I'll be hooking it up with the Mark's adapters um, kit that converts it to the transfer case. It's also going to be advanced headers have given me a new wire piece, so that piece, that bis, that piece is different as well. And that's sort of all the new parts going on. I also had to play around with the shifter, so I've made a little bracket. That's sort of the only thing I've pre-made because it's a bit fiddly setting that up. Um, so I've made that so I can put the VE shifter in there. So that's the kind of shifter that we're going to be using. We've got to get cracking on this thing. But before we do that, I've got the tools laid out that I'm going to need for the job. So if we're looking on the left here, look, we've got some breakfast, lunch and dinner and then a few snacks to keep me going. So I reckon pretty much with all this stuff, it's all I'm going to need. We're going to get cracking on this thing. Let's get to it. Sun's just come up. It's 6.58, so basically seven o'clock. So it's been an hour. And what I've done already, I've taken both drive shafts out, got all the center console out and the gear sticks out. I've got the clutch cylinder out and the hose, so the clutch is disconnected. The exhaust is out. And pretty much at the point now where I'm gonna start undoing the bell housing bolts, and then I'm gonna use the transmission jack to hold that up while I disconnect the cross member. And I think at that point is where we can pretty much drop the old box out and start looking at getting the new one ready. I'm trying to split the gearbox now and uh, it's always the sketchiest moment. <sighs> well, I'm not entirely surprised, but there's one bolt at the top that I forgot to undo. I swear I put my arm around everything and got them all. Anyway. Got it. Nine o'clock. Time update. Jeez, it's been three hours and the gearbox is still in there. <sighs> still made a long one. Now to me, looks like a gearbox that's kind of out. <laughs> That actually took quite a while because I had to um, pretty much take off the driver's side header off the exhaust so the bell housing could pop past it because it's kind of got a bit of a cutout for the starter motor. So I got that header off and it could pop it back a bit and it was just heaps of with the pry bar just trying to get that spline off. All right, now that that's out, I think it's time for some breakfast. What do you reckon? Tuna morning? Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> Super handy, I've set up this block and tackle here so I can hang it from the roof and then it makes it easy to get on and off the stand. But while I'm here, I'm gonna unbolt this cross member because we'll need to use that for connecting to the new gearbox. Okay, now we've finally got the gearbox out. So we've got the auto on the, well, your left and then the manual on the right. So the difference, both of these required a conversion kit to get installed. Now this is a standard manual box, so we've got the Marks Adapters bell housing on there. 
But when you go into an auto, obviously this gearbox matches the engine because they're both from a Holden. So you actually use a transfer case adapter, which is what this plate here is. So this transfer case adapter will get bolted on the back of the auto, and then I need to take off the transfer case from the manual. So I still keep the existing Nissan transfer case, and then that gets bolted onto this block here. Also, there's some holes here for the engine, well not the engine, the transmission cross member mounts. So those rubbers will bolt back onto here and then that'll go onto the factory cross member. And then ideally in a perfect world, it's meant to just all line up. So fingers crossed that'll happen. None of the drive shafts need to change, no lengths or anything. It's pretty much a bolt-in deal. As you can tell, this thing's bloody long. So there's also an output shaft extension adapter. So that goes onto the end of the gearbox there and goes through into this adapter. Now there's also an O-ring seal that needs to be pushed in to seal the oil into that reservoir there. And then other than that, she's pretty much ready to go in. Once I've got this all changed over, we'll go look into the engine bay where I need to pull off all the clutch assembly, take off the flywheel, and then install the flex plate onto the crank. And all right, now we've got that back casing off. Now just having a read of the Mark's four wheel drive adapter instruction kit for this assembly now, what we actually need to do is chop this shaft off. So in order to put that extension on, which is somewhere here, we need to chop the shaft off. Now it says from the back face of the gearbox, we come out 85 mil. So right about there. Now you want to get it as close as you can, but end of the day, this can sort of slot in and out a little bit as it needs. And then we'll come in with the blade, chop that off, chamfer it as well, and then test fit this extension on the end of it. You can see that I've chamfered the edge there, and then this spline will now go on top. Like a glove. On to the next step. Okay, the gearbox is pretty much ready to go in now. So I've done that adapter, got the transfer case on, got it up on the stand, got the cross member back in. So it's ready, pretty much ready to go into the car. Um, time check is about, it's 1.08. So it's one o'clock now, which means I've been at this for a long time. <laughs> now about seven hours, so six, yeah, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, one. Seven hours, and to be honest, I'm starting to feel a bit fatigued now. We're not even halfway, so it's gonna be a while longer yet. So I wanna get underneath now and get that flywheel out and get the um, clutch plate apart and then put the flex plate on and we can pretty much start lining this thing up and getting it in. Time for a Red Bull soon, I think. Oh, so it turns out the bolts that I've got on the flywheel are too long because the flywheel is thicker than a flex plate, plus the ARP bolts shouldn't be reused, so now I'm on the hunt for some bolts. I thought I had everything, but I knew somebody would catch me out. How you going, mate? Uh, I'm just chasing uh, flex plate bolts for a six liter. All right, I'll come down and have a look. Let's go. All right. Next thing I've got to deal with is the transmission cooler cooling. Obviously, manual transmission doesn't get as hot as an auto because it's not got the torque converter slipping, so I have to add in a trans cooler. Now, my friends down at Adrad Radiators have got me an awesome setup that I'm going to be chucking in there. So this is a, a remote cooler. They have a bit of cooling inside the gearbox, but it's always best to run an external cooler. So I've got there pro cooler here which has an in and out and pretty much a couple of tabs so you can mount it anywhere now i'm going to whack it underneath the tray so i'm going to mount it there um, and i've just used some uh, transmission cooler lines and i've got a whole lot of fittings and bits and pieces um, to hook this up there's also a special adapter you can get which plugs straight into the l98 on the gearbox and that can run to a standard barb that you need this fan will just sit on there like so and then we'll uh, work out where we're going to mount it and stick her up there. But this is what I made earlier. This is what I was talking about. It's a bit intricate, all this welding and angles and all sorts of stuff. So this has been pre-made to house the shifter, which is just the standard VE shifter. So I'm going to be whacking that in there. Um, and hopefully the Chiptronic and everything will work. So we're going to sort that out. Um, also, the bar that will run to the gearbox. So I can add that on later. 
and then I might change the ECU as well. So I've got to get up under the dash and that'll be a bit of mucking around to change this out because I've got to pull the bracket out that I built for that and then put this in. So I might drop it down now, get it sort of on the ground and then um, change that ECU and do this center thing. Hello? I'm already falling asleep. It's been about nine hours so far. Three o'clock, so yeah, nine hours. Still a bit to go. All right, the gearbox is on its stand, ready to go. Theoretically, this should be easier than taking it out because it doesn't have that spline to go on. I can pretty much come pretty flush up to the engine, just get those dowels located, use the transmission jack to tilt it forwards and backwards and get it bang on. That's the plan anyway. I'll feel a lot better once this is in. I'll feel a bit closer to victory. Sorry, I didn't record any of that because it took ages. I was laying up in the engine bay doing up all the bolts. It's almost five o'clock, so that took, what was the last time check? 3.30, four o'clock? Took me pretty much an hour just to do up those bolts, so. a Couple more to do, but it's in now. All right, gearbox is in. I'm just gonna sort out all the wiring and stuff now, so plug in what I can down here. Then go up top, check it from the top while there's a hole there. And then I'm gonna put in that shifter. So most of it's done down here, apart from the exhaust. Got all the cross member done up, all the bolts done up, all the torque converter bolts. I'll do that now, do the torque converter bolts. Then I'll drop it down, get inside, get the shifter installed, and then we'll be pretty close, I reckon. Now, one thing I was worried about was the linkage for the gear selector. Now, it looks like I can use this one, but it's a bit too long and I gotta get rid of that kink. So it's pretty much a case of just flattening this out in the vise. I'll give it a cut here where I've marked it and move this up and fingers crossed it should work perfectly. All right. It's getting a bit hectic. So I think it's at the point now where I need to write a list of what's left so I don't forget anything because there's yeah, a few different jobs going on and then I Gave up on that and started this and uh, uh. it's dark outside. 12 hours, all right. Torque converter bolts. Uh, that's it, so the last thing to do. <laughs> Wiring harness, transfer case is fouling on the automatic shift up arm. And we need transmission cooler mount. Gotta mount that. Trans cooler lines. You need to cut the bell housing to fit the exhaust or the extractors. So, my bad on that, because now it's in there and it's gonna be a pain in the ass to do. Uh, then I gotta put starter motor back in, drive shafts, exhaust, that's the Y piece, and also headers. And then, shit, we're getting close then. Then I gotta put everything back together, like spark plug leads, because I pulled them out. Um, that'd be pretty close then, I reckon. Start with that, see where we're at. <laughs> So I've got an exhaust, well, turn this off. This exhaust piece now, so there is a change with the exhaust. Obviously the headers are the advanced headers. Now with those advanced headers, so you get the two sides and then there's a wire piece. Now, there's a difference in the wire piece between the manual and the automatic. So I've got a new section for the auto. I just need to cut that flange off because mine is custom made, so it's got a three and a half output rather than the standard. I think it's two and a half or three inch. So I just need to measure that up, cut a little section off, weld the new flange on, and get this exhaust in. Ah! All right, time to check our list. I've got a few things knocked off. Sorry I'm not recording all of this, but it's quite boring. It's just finishing off these loose ends. Um, time check is 7.03. So 7.03 and it's still the 6th of August. So we've just gone 13 hours on this. Like I should get it done before midnight, I'm thinking now. I don't think it'll be the full 24 hours, but never say that. Never say it too early, could be something. So torque converter bolts, I've done that. Got the harness to go. Uh, the trans cooler lines are sort of mounted, we'll say them. Uh, cut the bell housing, I've done that, got the exhaust in, got the starter motor in. Um, headers are done, 
spark plug leads are done. So I've just got to make that Y piece on the exhaust, get the drive shafts in, which would be the last thing. Um, and it's pretty much just mounting this uh, trans cooler and getting this harness in. So this is a wiring harness. There's one plug that goes into that gearbox. Now I've labeled all these. I've got the pinouts and there's pretty much a bit of a tricky wiring deal I've got to do with the OBD plug. But other than that, it's really just power ground um, signal wire. And then you've got your park and drive lockout switch also needs a brake signal as well. And that's pretty much it. And one to the ECU, ECM. Oh, yeah. All right, it's been a while since I've chatted to you because I've been tying up a whole lot of loose ends on this, finishing the things off on that list, which I've now done. I'll turn this off for you. But the time is currently nine, nine o'clock on the dot. Look at that, so it's 9 p.m. We started at 6 a.m. So what's that, 12, 13, 14, 15 hours. We're in the 16th hour now. Pretty much finished it off. I've got the trans cooler connected. I've added the shifter, finished the wiring, got the exhaust connected. So it's pretty much time to start it now. It should run uh, as long as the ECU has been mapped correctly, which it should have been. There's a bit of trans fluid in there at the moment, so it's got to run through all the hoses, fill up the converter, so it might need a top up, but hopefully it'll move a little bit, and I'd call that a success. <laughs> time for bed, but um, we're well ahead of schedule, so it's only been 16 hours. This was a 24 hour challenge, so let's do it. It runs. So it ran, obviously with the new ECU in there, it's gonna take a bit of time for it to relearn everything. It kept stalling. It just needs a good solid run on the road to get everything to line up and tune again. I know one of the oxygen sensors are disconnected at the moment, so it really is just enough to get it out and in, but it moved. So the conversion's done. It drove in here as a manual 16 hours ago and just drove out of here as an auto. So job done. I'll tell you what, I've never been so sore working underneath the car for so long. So I'm gonna have a nice sleep tonight and a um, sore day tomorrow, I'm sure. But if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit subscribe and give this video a like. Um, something a bit different, you know. I do the built not bought stuff and I could have done a video on doing the gearbox change, but look, make it a bit harder for myself, do it in 24 hours. So that's the challenge there. I'm gonna go have some dinner, have a shower, go to sleep. Are you guys gonna hit that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out. <laughs>I've just spent three months doing engine upgrades on my motor here and I've been told I'm not allowed to turn the key until you press subscribe. Please press subscribe. <laughs>